Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Today's presentation is fire safety. And if you have any questions along the way, please put those in the chat box and we will do a Q&A at the end. The speaker for CERT today is Carrie Russolo. Carrie is an architect with over 30 years in the industry. She has taught design, lighting, and remodeling at FIDM in San Francisco for 22 years. Carrie is also an active disaster service worker, member of both CERT and CCCART, an instructor for both, and a volunteer at livestock evacuation sites. She is active in Tri-Cities Horsemen's Association and a proponent, proponent of working with local barns to establish disaster preparedness plans for possible evacuations. Hi, Carrie. Hi. Thank you everybody for joining. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to play a very short one minute video, which will give you an idea of. This message is brought to you by the US Fire Administration. Have two ways out. When fire strikes, deadly smoke can fill your home within minutes. That's why the USFA wants you to plan and practice home fire drills. Draw a map of each level of your home showing all doors and windows. Discuss the map with everyone who lives with you. Practice your home fire drill at least twice a year. Make sure all doors and windows that lead outside open easily. Push the smoke alarm button to start the drill. Try feeling your way in the dark or with your eyes closed. Have at least two ways out of every room. If your first way out is blocked by fire or smoke, you can use your second way out. If there is smoke, get low and go. Crawl quickly under the smoke to your nearest exit. Close doors behind you and gather at a pre-planned outside meeting place where first responders can see you. Call 911. Remember, get out and stay out. Never go back inside for people, pets, or things. Learn more at www.usfa.fema.gov. So that is through Federal Emergency Management Agency, and that's an excellent source for anything that- When the sky oh, turns wait. gray, rain Hang on. ice, okay. and temperatures I gotta turn continue that off. to drop, you ask yourself how- Okay, we're done now. Um, so that's an excellent source for any sort of disaster information. Let me go here. Okay, so talking, about fire safety today, how we're gonna keep our cool when things heat up. Um, first thing, think about prevention. So the building code, California building code requires both smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors in your home. Take a look at your floor plan of your house. Every single bedroom should have a, a smoke detector on the ceiling of the bedroom, and there should be one in the hallway outside the bedroom, and there should be one on every level of the house. As far as carbon monoxide detectors, we should have those on every level of the house. Typically, we put them about five feet above the floor because carbon monoxide gas is odorless and it can ri rise. So you don't really want it at the base. The one that they show here that's plugged in is probably down at the floor level. So that's not going to be as effective as one that you'd have mounted five feet up um, or on the ceiling. So carbon monoxide detectors should be located on every floor. You don't need one in the bedrooms. You don't need one in the hallways. You just need one somewhere on every floor. If you have a basement, a second floor, a third floor, you, that's where you need your carbon monoxide detectors. Um, do not put them near kitchens or bathrooms. Very good reasons for that. Um, obviously, if you're near the kitchen, you're going to be cooking. So you could have smoke or uh, steam that's going to set them off. And then the code requires them not to be any closer to bathroom doors than three feet, because when you open the bathroom door, obviously the steam is gonna come out if you're taking a hot shower and it's gonna set off those alarms. And if anybody has ever been in the middle of one of those alarms, they're pretty, uh, pretty obnoxious to listen to. Um, second story egress. So every home should have a second story egress ladder. And this is one of the better ones. And I like this one because it's got little stanchions at the, at the end. So when you unfold it, this is gonna hook over the windowsill. You're gonna take the, the wrapping off. It's gonna cascade down, but this is gonna keep it slightly away from the building. So you can actually get a tow hold into the ladder. Um, some things that are good to know, especially if you're remodeling and anybody, anybody you're working with should know this, but windows should be no more, the bottom of the window should be no more than 44 inches above the floor so people can easily climb out. 
the width of the window must be at least 20 inches wide. And that's when the window is fully open, not just when, ju not just measuring the window itself. The height of the opening must be at least 24 inches tall. It must be at least a minimum of five and a half square feet open. So 20 inches by 24 is not gonna do it. If you have a 20 inch wide window, you'd need a taller one. Taller one. Um, and then do invest in a really good second story egress ladder. Um, as I said, part of the reason for these window openings is not just so people can get out, but also you have fire department that may need to get in and get, gain access through a window. Um, another place to put carbon monoxide detectors that people don't always think about, if your garage is attached to your house, it may not be a bad idea to have a carbon monoxide detector just outside of the garage, like maybe 10 feet from the door into the garage. That way, if anything is happening in your house, you're going to be alerted or in your garage, you're going to be alerted. So very helpful to have those carbon monoxide detectors in areas that you might not typically think of. Um, do not put them, though, close to a gas appliance. If you put it close to a gas dryer or a gas stove, because just the slight amount could trigger them. Oh, wrong way. Um, so how do we actually put out a fire? So we're looking for fire extinguishers that have a certain rating. And fire extinguishers are rated by ABCs. So an A fire extinguisher will typically put out trash, wood, or paper. A B fire extinguisher can put out liquids and a C can put out electrical equipment. So what we like to look for is a fire extinguisher, which we call an ABC fire extinguisher. And it's capable of extinguishing all these different materials. Um, one thing you wanna be really aware of is you never wanna put water on a, on a cooktop grease fire that's gonna cause the fire to explode and could seriously injure somebody. So if you have a cooktop grease fire, if you've got a pan that's all of a sudden in flames, cover it with a metal wood or a cookie sheet and then turn off the source of heat. So when we have a fire, we have what we call the fire triangle. And fire is composed of oxygen, heat, and fuel. So what we try to do is we try to snuff out one of those items. Fire can't exist without all three of those. Um, I short story, when I joined CERT three years ago, I took the training and was very excited about, I'm going to be a DSW, I'm going to get fire extinguishers, I'm going to be prepare my house, I'm going to be ready to go. And I put it off. So Christmas Day, um, I spilled some grease at the bottom of my oven, didn't think anything about it, because I was taking the the roast out. And all of a sudden my son said, mom, your, your oven's on fire. And I said, oh, Ryan, stop kidding around. He goes, no, mom, really turn around and look, your oven's on fire. So I turned around and of course my entire inside of my oven was a wall of flames. So what did I do? I actually froze. I didn't really know what to do. I hadn't bought the fire extinguisher. I didn't know what to do. My son, who I don't think of as being level-headed, very quietly said, mom, just get me the baking soda. So I reached in my pantry and pulled out the powdered sugar. He said, mom, baking soda. I pulled out the salt, mom, baking soda. I finally got in the baking soda. He opened the door, threw it in, fire was out because we eliminated the source of oxygen. So after that, I did go out and I bought three fire extinguishers so I can be very prepared. Um, so that's a good lesson. So everybody today, I would really like it if you all went home, walked around your house, made sure you have smoke detectors in the appropriate places. Make sure you have carbon monoxide detectors. And if you don't have a fire extinguisher, please go to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy one. They're not that expensive. Um, it's good to have one in your garage, one in your kitchen, one maybe in your yard if you're doing any yard work. Um, how do we operate them? So we have a little acronym which is called PASS. P stands for pull and we're gonna pull the pin out. There's a little pin right here that you just pull straight out. A is for aim the nozzle. This is the nozzle portion of the fire extinguisher. So you're gonna hold this in one hand and you're gonna actually hold the nozzle in the other hand. We're gonna squeeze this lever right here. And as we squeeze, that's gonna cause the water or the chemical to come out of the end of the hose. And then what you wanna do with a fire extinguisher is you wanna sweep it at the base of the fire. And the reason you do it at the base is because that's where the fuel is. If, you, if you're squeezing it up high, if you're trying to put the fire out up at this level, you're not gonna eliminate it. You're only gonna cause more smoke. So always sweep that, 
fire extinguisher nozzle, this long nozzle that you've got at the base of the fire, and that's gonna put the fire out. So remember this, pass, pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep. Um, and what we do in CERT is we take students out in the yard and we let them <clears throat> practice on bushes. We give them fire extinguishers and we say, the base of the bush where the, where the roots are going into the dirt, that's your source of fuel. So aim there. So it's a really good idea to practice with a fire extinguisher. Um, you can get rechargeable ones, but again, they're not that expensive. So it's really worth it to just practice with it, try it, see how it feels. Some of them are heavier than others. So if you have difficulty lifting, you may want to get a lighter weight one, but definitely it's a, it's a very good thing to have. Um, and then I just want to keep reiterating this fire triangle. This is not a bad thing to put on your refrigerator. So if you ever forget what composes a fire and what you need to eliminate, it's the oxygen, the heat, and the fuel. Um, oops. And that is fire safety. Do you have any questions on this? If you do have questions, please put those in the chat and we can ask Carrie. Okay, here's a question. What size ABC fire extinguisher do you recommend? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, they do come in different sizes. So I would, gosh, I don't know. Um, let me stop sharing for a minute. Brian, Lynn Bloom, do you have an answer for that? I see you on here. No? Uh, good question. I don't know. I would just basically go to Home Depot. Let me see if I can find some different sizes on here. Carrie, can you hear me now? Yes, now I can hear you. Okay, you so the average home, uh, you get two or three small extinguishers. I think they're like three pounds, two to three pound extinguishers, uh, ABC dry chemical. Uh, mount one in the kitchen, mount one by the um, garage, either inside or outside by, by the doorway leading into the garage. And then maybe mount one um, in another part of the house, uh, probably near an exit door. Um, but the smaller ones for a home are plenty, uh, plenty adequate, two or three. Um, kitchen is the most likely place you'll have a fire. And the second most likely place would be the garage. Thank you, Brian. I knew you'd have that answer. And for those who don't know, Brian was one of our presenters, another CERT presenter. Um, he's actually our CERT director too. So he, he has the answers to everything. <laughs> okay, and Carrie, we have another question. Do they have expiration dates? Um, typically there's a date stamped on the bottom of the cylinder body, so you can look and see if there's an expiration. They do last quite a while, but it's a good idea to just check and see if there's an expiration date stamped on there. Okay, and then another question. If I have no fire extinguisher and I have a fire at my home, what do I need to do? Uh, first thing, get out. Second, call the fire department, ASAP. You can't, you can't try to fight a fire on your own. One thing we teach in CERT is what we call size up. So if, if it's bigger than a trash can, you're not gonna have a lot of, a lot of uh, luck in putting it out. So at that point, get yourself, get your family out of the building as quickly as you can. Don't go back for valuables. Um, call the fire department as quickly as you can because they're the ones that are trained to put the fire out. Um, we had a friend, uh, had a good friend that had a fire in November in Pleasant Hill. And he literally was sitting in his house when he heard a huge boom and it turned out his um, furnace exploded. And he saw black smoke immediately pouring out of all the registers. So he had a couple roommates upstairs. He ran upstairs, they were sleeping. He woke them up, dragged them out of the house 
And then they were calling the fire department on their way out. And when the fire department came, it was interesting because he sent me the video of what happened and he was getting very agitated because his roof was on fire and he was out, everybody was out, but obviously the house was in flames. And he was saying, you can hear him on the video saying, come on guys, what are you waiting for? My house is burning. But in retrospect, they were very smart because they were doing a size up. They were walking around, they were checking where the fire was, they were checking the best way of entrance. And once they got in, they got it out immediately. There was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But they do, just like we're taught to do, they size it up. They don't rush in blindly. They make sure they know what's going on, where the best source of entrance is. So um, always, always call the fire department. You've got to defer to them. Okay, and another question, we have a fire at the door, how do we go out? That's why you've got to have at least two sources of exit. Every room should have a door and a window. So if you've got a, if you've got a fire at your bedroom door, make sure you've got a window that you can access. And if it's a second story window, that's why you want to have those second story egress ladders so you can get out. But that's why that little video, I love that video I showed you because it says practice. You know, put on a blindfold. If you, smoke is very heavy and it's gonna obscure your visibility. So when you are trying to get out, it's, you're probably gonna wanna drop to the floor. The smoke is, is less there. You can breathe a little better and you can also see. Um, but try putting on a blindfold and feeling your way out of the house in case of a fire. So maybe you know where to go. Um, that's the best thing you can do is practice and make sure you've got those two forms of egress, either the door or the window, one or the other. And make sure you touch the door. If the door is hot, don't open the door because there's flames on the other side. Hey, Carrie, can I inject something? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so final remarks on this subject is, again, like you said, practice, practice, practice. Um, we stress uh, having family fire drills, practicing uh, your exits, and then at, you need to have a gathering point that everybody knows about uh, where you will gather immediately following leaving the house so that you can take a head count and be sure everybody got out and everybody's accounted for. One of the first things the fire department will ask when they get there, is there anybody left in the house? And it'd be nice for you to be able to tell them, no, we have everybody out. They're all accounted for. They're right here. Um, so practice and, and uh, have that location ahead of time and everybody's... Uh, mind as to where they need to get to so they can you can do a head count and that little one minute video um i can send it to the library that they can post it's a great little video video because it says exactly that practice getting out have a gathering point as brian said really important and um don't go back for anything you know you might have your grandmother's jewelry or photographs it's not worth your life just get yourself and your family out and wait for the fire department to do their thing. Oh, anything different for someone living in an apartment? I see the question. Um, same thing, if you're in an apartment, regardless of whether you're in a second story, third story, um, if you have a third story, you can still use that escape ladder, anything higher than that, um, you're going to have to wait for the fire department to get you out if you can't exit out your front door and there's no other, no other means of escape. At that point, I would stay on the floor, um, maybe go in a bathroom, run some water, um, just kind of use common sense. If you don't have a way out, call the fire department. But if it's a two-story apartment building, same thing as this two-story home. You know, have your, have your ways of getting out. You've got to have the two means of egress. Every bedroom is required to have a window by code. So if you can't get out the door, get out the window. If the fire's outside your window, uh, exit out your door. So exactly the same thing for an apartment, unless it's a high rise, and then you have to wait for the fire department if you don't have any way of, of escaping. <laughs> 